The Race and Post cast in association with Paddy Power. They prize the poor UK and Irish race in the night before. Hi there, welcome along to another Racing Post Cheltenham Festival Antipost Postcast. Just four weeks to go until the show gets underway. I'm Bruce Millington, Tom Siegel and David Jennings, my Racing Post colleagues, join me as well as from Paddy Power, Brendan Duke, who will be giving us all the odds on the race that we're looking at today, which is the Ryanair Chase. And no doubt he'll also be telling us why we should be backing Vroom Vroom Mag. I'm pleased to tell you that this will be the first postcast ever that David Jennings has appeared on where he won't be talking about Kitten Rock because she's definitely not involved in this. <laughs> first of all, though, chaps, I think the challenge that faces is A, work out who's running and then work out who's winning. So to start us off, Brendan Duke, what is the latest show from Petty Power on the Ryanair, please? OK, and this is anti-post rules apply betting. So it's four to one favourite road to riches, nine to two Vautour, six to one uh, joint third faves, Vroom Vroom and Alfaroff, eight to one Valserlido, nine to one Smashing, ten to one Jossel's Hill, twelve to one Vibrato Valtat, uh, 16 to 1 Gil Gamboa, Village Vic, Top Gamble, 20 to 1 brings in Dynast, Petit Zig, Anacotti, Champagne West, and it's a pony bar. Yeah, we do need a big show because, I mean, only about three of those might actually run. And, Brennan, just to reiterate what you're saying there, while other firms are very short about um, Vitor, that's because they're non runner, no bet. You are, you know, if you back Vitor at that 9 to 2, which is, is easily the big price in Vitor, that's because he's unlikely to run. I think you were betting on whether Vitor runs in this or the Gold Cup, but I believe you've pulled stumps on that now, haven't you? We've, pull, we've pulled stumps. We got that one badly wrong, I'm afraid, Bruce. Well, uh, the, the, the way it's looking at the moment, if he's 9 to 2, say, he was twos on if he ran. How do you turn 150? So we're making him about a three to one shot to run. Well, it's not over. It's not all over then, is it? But would you be, is that how short you'd be if they said, look, we've got enough riches in the Gold Cup. We're going to go for, for the Ryanair with Vittor. You'd make him twos on, would you? Oh, I think so, yeah. He'd, he'd, he'd tie up a leg and beat these, wouldn't he? I guess so. Uh, Tom, do we need to worry about Vittor then, given that Brennan's pretty sure that, uh, that he won't be running? Well, the only chance if it turned really, really soft. Bruce, if it was a heavy ground Cheltenham, which is pretty unlikely, I don't know what price that is, that must be a long shot in itself, then I suppose they would consider it uh, on the day. Willie's made his mind up late on many occasions in the past, but all vibes tell us and everything they've said says it won't be running in the Ryanair. So are we all happy to bet without Vitor as far as the, the for the, uh, the purpose of this next conversation goes? Yeah, yeah I think we have to, Bruce. What I about Road to Riches, David Jennings? Where's he going to run? Yeah, if, if you were to give me a free bet on where I think he's going to run, I'd say probably the Ryanair. But, um, you know, I, I think the Gold Cup is probably more his cup of tea. But he does a form over shorter, and he was third to Don Cossack in the Drillmore a couple of years ago. I thought he got a bonkers right, to be honest, in the Irish Gold Cup. We've all spoken about that. But uh, I think, just reading between the lines, I think Noel would absolutely love to go for the Gold Cup. But I think if you've got Don Poley and Don Cossack in the, in the Gold Cup, I think Michael and Eddie might just say to themselves, look, lads, we'll we're, they're either going to run Road to Riches or Val Toledo in this, so it'll just be interesting to see what they do, but I just have a feeling that it might be Road to Riches. I'm not so sure about that. Have you got right. a, yeah, I, I think they're going to go for gold there. I mean, I guess the, the, the question is, you know, who is going to be the sponsor's representative in the Ryanair, isn't it? Tom, who would you think it's the most well, likely to be? If you were... Uh, if you're a nice person, Bruce, you'd be running Val Toledo in the Ryanair, in my opinion. I think Willie Mullins has got three runners, isn't he? Three of the first four favourites in the Gold Cup. There's no need for him to run a 25 to one shot. Noel Mead is desperate to win the Gold Cup with this horse. He should have won it when Harbour Pilot smashed into the last. Road to Riches was, went close yesterday. How anyone thinks he doesn't stay the trip is beyond me. I thought he ran a brilliant race last year. He's only beaten three lengths. For me, it's obvious Road to Riches should be running in the Gold Cup and Valsor in here, just from a human aspect, because that's, if you want to say which horse is most suited to the race, it's a debatable question. Road to Riches might actually be a quicker horse than Val Salido, so maybe he'd be the one if you were trying to actually decide on the most suitable horse for the race. But in human terms, I think there's a very strong chance that Valsa will run in this race and Road to Riches will go for the Gold Cup simply for the reason that Noel is desperate to run him in that race and it's a lifelong ambition for him and he's very closely tied up with the, with the O'Learys. OK, well, the other horse beginning with V that we need to talk about there festival target and I'll, I'll go across uh, to the founder and president of the Vroom Vroom Mag fan club, Brennan Duke. Where should she go and where will she go? Okay, 
I'm, I'm nearly, I'm nearly, I'm nearly in tears talking about this. Right, the the latest, <laughs> the latest thing is, she should always have gone for the Ryanair because it, it turns out she's a brilliant jumper of hurdles, but she was always an electric jumper of fences, right? But that was thrown out the window because they decided to go for the world hurdle. So now she should go for the world hurdle because you know she's been running over hurdles and all that. I mean, it, 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 to, to be honest with you, Bruce, the charge of the Light Brigade was better planned than Broom Broom's campaign this year. It's an absolute scandal. Um, but the latest thing now is it's, it's, it's all changed. And he's going to run tomorrow, presumably win, go for the world hurdle, and Broom Broom's going to go for the mayor's hurdle. <sighs> oh, I know. I just sigh, sigh, <laughs> sigh. The, the, the tragedy for that is it gets you horrible bookies off the hook for the, for the four-timer, doesn't it? The Tuesday Acre. I mean, that... That can't happen. That really, really would be a horror. But you, you'd make that favourite now, would you? Well, room, it seems room to for be, the mares. It, 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 that, that, that seems to be the latest thinking. Now, I mean, I, I, I was off last week, uh, so it's all changed uh, while I was off. So it could change again. And I mean, I suppose Addy has to go and win tomorrow, but she likely will. Tom, you've got a view on that? Yeah, I've got a strong one. I think... Vroom, Vroom Mag should be running in the world. I, the, the key is Annie Power for me, obviously. Uh, she's, she can't, they can't run her over three miles. She doesn't get the trip. She's too keen. She's too fresh. It's madness to run Annie Power over three miles. If she goes through her career without winning a Cheltenham race, when I think she's the best uh, mare I've ever seen, and she might easily get, she's no guarantee. She so you're going to Dawn Run, were you, Tom? Yeah, I think she's better than her. I think she's better than her. I think she's got more talent than her. I mean, she'll never do what Dawn Run did, but I think she could have won a champion hurdle easily, Annie Power. I think that uh, if they don't ru get a Cheltenham Festival win out of her, because I don't think she'll beat Thistlecrack over three miles. I, don't, I think she's a lot. She wouldn't even be favourite to beat Thistlecrack. Uh, I think it's a, it's a travesty. I think she's got to run in the mare, Annie, mare's Annie, and then Vroom Vroom Mag. The best race for her is the Ryanair, but it's not the race they've trained her for. Willie's Willie's very much a. Uh, he goes by the rules. He he, ca he carries. He trains a horse specifically for a certain race. He hasn't run Vroom Vroom Rag over fences since the start of the season. If she had been entered on Saturday in the Ascot race, which I think would have suited her, I think she'd have probably run it. Then we could have said, yeah, he's changed tack. He's going for a chasing campaign. I think he's going to stick over hurdles. I think Vroom Vroom Mag should run in the world hurdle. Uh, but whether she does, it's you know, I just can't predict that a lot. It is so fraught, isn't it? Look, yeah. I tell you what we're going to do from now, and we're going to assume Vitor, Vroom Vroom, and Road Switches aren't going to run, and that Val Salido is. Okay, so on that basis, David, um, Alfaroff wins it, doesn't he? <laughs> I know you're a big fan, Bruce. I, I'm not, uh, unfortunately. Uh, I'd love to agree with you, uh, but I don't. I just think. Two years ago, he was probably a better horse than he is now, and he couldn't win it. I thought he was outpaced that day behind Dynast. You know, got taken out of his comfort zone. And I think the form of the Peterborough Chase is looking worse and worse by the day when you consider what Petty Zig has done since. I know Alfrov would have beaten Petty Zig that day, but, you know, I, I thought he was ridden to place in the King George. thought he ran quite well. And it could turn out to be a, probably the worst renewal of the race ever this year if the horses that we mentioned don't run. But... I could see Alfaroff finishing third or fourth. I, ju I just can't see him winning it. Who do you like, then? Um, there's a couple in here, I think, that are probably value in that we know they're probably going to run. Uh, the first of which was the horse that run won last Friday at Kempton, uh, Joss's Hill. Like, Joss's Hill has so many knockers, it's unbelievable, and, and probably rightly so in many, in many respects. But he has these in form. He was third in last year's article. He was second of Auteur in the in the Supreme. So he has good course form. I thought, I know this is going to sound absolutely ridiculous, but I thought before he fell in the Tinkle Creek, the first three fences he jumped, I have never seen him jumping better when he was going at f flat out at speed. I think he is a better horse jumping you at speed. You better hope for a low sun then on the day, <laughs> isn't it? If there's only three fences, he might have half a chance. But he is, he is actually, he, I thought he was a lot better in the second half of the race at Kempton. Um, I think he's a good horse. All through his career, if you go through his form, it's worked out reasonably well. Um, I thought he's the type of horse. He fits the age profile being an eight-year-old. I think the last four winners have been either seven or eight. Um, I just think he's a horse with course form that if he, if, I think to win the last day will give him plenty of confidence. And, you know, he's not, he's not everybody's cup of tea, but I thought he would run well. And the other two I just want to mention, I know Dynas won the race two years ago, and he's still only 10 believe it or not it's hard to believe he's had a wind operation and I thought if any horse was crying out for a wind operation it was Dynast I remember in the in the King George two years ago it was there for the take and he travelled like a dream and then he just didn't finish out his race behind Silviniaco Conti um, I thought 
if the real Dynast showed up on Saturday in the Ascot Chase, I think 20 to 1 and look a very big price. And the other horse, like Justice Hill, who is jumping issues, is Champagne West, who like was 7 to 4 to win a handicap chase off, I think, 1 5 4 the last day. That tells you what they think of him. I think he's a really good horse, but he just has the potential to clout one, just like Justice Hill does. But I think those three are maybe the three that might be worth focusing on at the prices because I think they're going to run in the race and I think potentially one of them could win it. Here's Paddy Power's latest horse racing offer. They are non-runner, no bet for all Cheltenham Championship races. TNC Supply, 18plus, gambleaware.co.uk. Welcome back. Bruce Millington, Tom Siegel, David Jennings and from Paddy Power, Brendan Duke. We're chewing the fat on the Ryanair. We've uh, worked out who we think isn't going to run and who is. Uh, David's come up with his three against the field, which are Jossie's Hill, Dynast and Champagne West. Uh, Tom Siegel, all things considered, where does the value lie right now? Well, I think Valsolido wins if he runs, Bruce, but I have no idea where he runs, so we'll leave him out. I think. Oh, hang on, so we can't just leave him out. I think I think he's liable to win to to run in this. Don't if you? he runs, he's got the best form. I think I think he's a really really good progressive chaser. He looks to me like I don't think there's any great evidence that three miles that he's a stayer out necessarily. I think he's got plenty of good form over two and a half. If you watch the race against uh, Jack Adam at the start of the season, he travelled really well. He was right on his tail, jumping the last to John Dirk, and I can't see any reason why two and a half won't suit him. Before, I think, uh, before the start of the season, they were worried about him staying three miles. You know, he's sort of an afterthought to go to Punchestown at the end of last season. That was a, a funny race, really. I think he, I don't see the, the trouble with him back at two and a half. I think he'd win if he ran. I think he's the, the horse with the upside, th with the top class form, but... As we say, we, we don't know where we're going. The, I, I agree with David about Champagne West. I, I know I'm on his side already. Uh, his jumping's got to obviously improve. He looked like he didn't even see the fence at Cheltenham last time when, when he was 7-4 for the handicap. And I think the horse that we've all forgotten about and we continue to forget about is last year's second. Now, last year, the race was won by Uxie Zandra with Don Cossack in third. In second, quite, quite, quite a good second, was Mafia, uh, Nicky Henderson's mare. She is a massive price for me at 25 to 1. She's certain to run. She's got really, really good Cheltenham form at the Cheltenham Festival. She, should have, she was second to Hollywell in the handicap the, the year before. Last year, she split, as we say, Luxy Zondra and uh, Don Cossack with some really good horses in behind. Fairway back, wasn't she, Tom? She wasn't. She wasn't. She was only beaten five lengths. Oh, was she? Okay. She was only I beaten was on five lengths. Though, yeah, it seemed like and, a chasm. You know, and Luxy Zondra would probably have been 20 lengths ahead of her at one stage. I thought she ran really, really well. I think she's an interesting horse. If they get the good ground, I certainly could see it. She's she's already proven she's in form. She won she won a race at I think it was at Doncaster last time. Now obviously it wasn't the form she's shown last year, but she's pretty good. She is, and I can't believe she's twenty five to one. Anything else, Tom? Maybe like a grey horse with yellow colours, no, switch stables yeah. recently. You know, with a young well, progressive well, trainer. What well, do you think? We know all Alpha about Alpha Off. Maybe. I, yeah, dear. I've lost so much money following Alpha Off. I've been on him. I think for the last three uh, King Georges, thinking that. He's just, I've always thought he's top class. Uh, I'm unlike our colleague, Paul Keeley. I tend to have these, uh, if, I, if I have bad experience with horses, I tend to write them off too quickly. Are you now, a I might tips, Jai? I always thought you were a pretty forgiving guy. No, I don't. I'm, I'm bad like that. I should be more forgiving. I should be more forgiving. I think that's one of the worst aspects I have in my uh, sort of tipping prowess, if I have any, is to not, not forgive uh, quickly enough. And that's my issue with him. I just got it. I've just got it in my back of my head that he's had his chance. He's 11 now. That if he was going to win a festival race, oh, he's already won one. Obviously, he won the, su the, the uh, supreme. But if he's going to win another one over fences, he would have done it by now. But look, on form, that yes, you, you're spot on there about the form with uh, in the King George. It's the best form we've had this season. Keeps being, uh, you know, shown to be top class form. That form is the best form, I think, of any of the horses running in the race. I think, you know, the, the magic man Steve Mason from Racing Road Post Ratings would have him and Smad Place, who won't run in this race, well but clear should. on form. Uh, no, would not you, necessarily. Would you run Smad here, or do you think? No, I wouldn't, because I think he's a strong star. I think he's got. A, I think. I think he's underrated in the Gold Cup. Actually, I think if we if we had our Gold Cup, uh, uh, you know, analysis again, I think 14, 16 to one about him is probably the wrong price now. I think he should be shorter than that. I think it's because he ran badly in the King George that people think that he's not a good horse. I think he's, I think he's done a lot to, to suggest that he could be a Gold Cup placed horse at least. So for me, as you say, he's got the best form. It's just he's an 11-year-old, and I don't like backing 11-year-olds in graded one races, but I've been proved wrong time and time again, so I see no reason why he won't run well. Ageist, bitter Tom Seagull. It is, I am. Off I am. OK, presuming, Brennan Duke, that your beloved Vroom Vroom runs in anything from the mares to the Mild Mayor fleet, who do you <laughs> think is going to win the Ryanair? Um, 
I would say at the moment I would probably back smashing on the basis that he'll definitely run. Now his, his, his improvement has come on uh, bad ground, but his best hurdles run was the, the Coral Cup, which was on decent ground. He might just have improved because he's a very good jumper. So he'll run. If Village Vic swerved the burn group and decided to run here, which I think they should, given we're making all of these uh, horses who, who aren't all that good, credible contenders, I mean... He was getting. He was given a stone to Champagne West, and he only beat him four and a half lengths. So I suppose on the weights and measures, he can't beat him. But he's improving hand over fist. Um, he's a brilliant jumper. He put the Josses Hill etc. under pressure with their jumping. I, I'd run him, and if he ran, I'd back him. You should do a special on um, the winner of the Ryanair beginning with a V. There's loads of them, isn't it? There is. Got Vibrato Valta as well, haven't we? So. It's there's plenty Vibrato, of... Vibrato, yes. Yeah, yeah that's true. Good for the Vs. Have you got any uh, specials or anything for the Ryanair or anything on day three, Brennan? Um, no. In, in surprisingly enough, uh, the Ryanair has not captured the public's imagination. Uh, uh, even though you're you're kind of standing alone in the um, non, non-runner, non no-bet uh, situation, is that not attracting some business given that you're doing it differently to everyone else? Uh, Pretty sorry, what's your worst result like right now on this? Well, our worst result is Vautour because we bi- we built up the liabilities when everyone thought he was going to run in it, and uh, he was he, he was such a short price. But people were happy to take short prices because he's going to win, he's going to run. Uh, one and one is two, and uh, so 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 he's still our worst result, but he's he's not going to run. Okay, Bruce, and Bruce, sorry, just just a quick line on smashing. Um, just two interesting points about smashing. Um, who's had a fantastic season this season. He's won seven times, and six of those wins, would you believe, have been actually on officially heavy ground. So that tells you, uh, as, uh, as Brendan said, he did run well on better ground at the festival before. But the other key thing, which is fascinating about a horse, really, Henry de Brom had talked about this horse. You can't actually ask this horse to jump, and he nearly fell a Thurlis two, two starts ago with the second last with Davy Russell. And he said afterwards, he said, Davy knows exactly what went wrong at the second last. He said, you actually can't make up the horse's mind for him because you have to let him do things himself. So when you let him go and pop his fences, he's brilliant. But if you ever need to shove him into one when he's under pressure, that he hates it. And that, that's why he's made mistakes in the past. And that's why he made a mistake at the second last that day. So if you actually watch the race at Gorham Park on Saturday, he's just allowed to pop everything, pop everything, pop everything. And I just wonder, Cheltenham, in the Ryanair, on quicker ground, when he actually needs to fly one instead of pop it, whether he just get it wrong. That's the only thing I'd say about smashing. You lot oh, are making this point. assumption, aren't you, that it's going to be good ground. Have you, uh, to quote Brendan Duke from a podcast a couple of weeks ago, have you no eyes? It's been chucking it, it down. down. I mean, I know that yeah, normally... normally it dries it does. like the Gobi Desert, doesn't it? Well, I guess it does, but it's not absolutely guaranteed. You know, it's soft what? enough by the Friday after a morning's rain, wasn't it? You get that on the Tuesday morning, exactly. so it'll go soft enough. Well, like, it's a fa- very it's a dangerous point. to assume that it's going to be good ground. Well, I was actually in Cheltenham last week, and I was talking to a lady who walks her dogs on Cheltenham. Well, not on the race course, but is in this, the... Is this your idea of a holiday, go to Cheltenham when the festival's not on? Or, or are you in charge of booking the hotels for the Paddy Power? No, uh, it was, it, I, 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 I was over on, in a person. I was over to see my daughter. She lives over there. Oh, right, I see. Yeah, but anyway, this lady I was talking about who walks the dogs around the, the, the outskirts of the track said she'd never seen it as muddy. And we're only 15 to 8 soft ground, when I think normally at this time of the year we'd be 3 or 4 to 1. So it, it, it's not impossible, I suppose. I think you should have got her number, because it would be very interesting to hear from her on a, on a daily basis as she walks her dog around. What sort dog of dogs walking. were they? Pardon? What sort of dogs were they? He's a, he's a, he's a big dog. I'm not... You're an expert good. on the dogs, I'm not, I'm not great with dogs. I've had the odd trap six do me a turn, Tom. But, I'm, I'm, but I'm he was great. leaving a print, this dog, was he? Oh, she said she'd never seen it as muddy. Yeah, I think we should be careful. Are you betting on the going just yet? Or yes, we are. We're good to soft is two to five. But what you have running for you there is even if it's soft, the Clark might call it good to soft. Okay. It's 15 to eight soft, seven to one good, and 33 to one heavy. Oh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to have a little bit on heavy. That's, that's, a, that's a bet, that is. Right, let's summarise how we think the uh, Ryanair is going to be run this year. I will start very quick. Alf Roth will win. Tom Siegel. <laughs> is that how it's going to be run? It's just like well, they'll, they'll win. Well, they'll set off, they'll trundle <laughs> around for a bit and then, and then as at the run, end when yeah, they get to the they post, the, the grey horse and the yellow yeah. colours will be in front. It's quite simple. Tom? Uh, I think, well, I, th- I mean, I think the key is the the owner, uh, the, the sponsor's horses, Road to Riches, Val Salido. I think they're the two and, Val, and Alf Roth are the standout horses. If they all run, I would go for Valsur. Uh, the, the, the fly in the ointment for me are Champagne West and Mafia. 
David Jennings. Um, I think Joss Patel is probably the most likely winner. He's only 10 to 1 with Paddy Power, so they obviously give him a better chance than some other firms. But I think at the prices, I just have a feeling that Dine has to be a lot shorter price after Saturday. He's 20 to 1, and Champion West 20 to 1 as well. But if, if, if a gun was put to my head, I think Joss Patel. OK, and the Duke. Um, I'll probably back Village Vic when it goes non-runner, no bet. Um, sure. but he, he, he pay, I don't think he'd be... Much so there we are, Bruce, nice and clear for everyone. That was nice and clear, yeah. yeah. Ignore the others for once, <laughs> listen to, to me and, and back Alf Roth. OK, thank you very much, chaps, great stuff. And do please join us next week when we'll be looking ahead to the novice hurdles. The Race and Post cast in association with Paddy Power. They stream all UK and Irish racing live on your mobile, tablet or PC.